Alright guys, so this is actually a video I am pretty excited to make. It's not multiplayer, though <laughs> you could you could take the build order I'm going to use into multiplayer and that would genuinely be quite hilarious. It's a Portuguese rush and I just, no one would expect it. Like, it would be so good. No one would just, no one would see it coming. It's like something Azamk would do, but... Well, actually, it's inspired by Azamk. It's taken, I took this, you know, from one of his build orders and modified it slightly for the purpose of what I'm doing in this video, which is, I'll, uh, you know, I'll explain that. Basically, I'm up against the AI, the expert bot, but he has a 100% handicap on top of being an expert. So this is going to be pretty difficult. And the reason I'm doing it is because uh, someone posted on one of my videos. He said, he said, I'm having trouble uh, beating the expert... UI by rushing with Portuguese. I can't remember what he said exactly, otherwise I'd have it on screen right now. I, I couldn't find his comment. I spent like 20 minutes looking for this comment, just just couldn't find it. So that was a whole bunch of time wasted. I thought this video would be really quick to make, but actually I've spent quite a while uh, on it because, uh, well, you'll see as we get towards the end. But basically, yes, uh, I even made the, the AI the Iroquois, because at the highest level of multiplayer, Iroquois is undisputably the highest, best civilization in the game, every top player say so. Anyway, what are we doing here? We're looking for the Travois man, we're hoping, we're hoping that he doesn't turn up right now, we don't want, there he is, come on trading post, get up before he casts it, I need the XP, there it is, he gets the XP and finds a 140 food treasure, absolutely insane, I was so lucky, I just thought there's no way I'm going to get that trading post up, because it's so far away, my ta my explorer just started on like the, like the opposite most furthest away point of my town centre possible, like, as you do, and uh, you know, went for this anyway, I thought you know, it's single player I can restart. In multiplayer I probably wouldn't have taken that risk. I probably would have built the trading post in my base because, you know, you'd still get the XP at some point. There you can see the Travois man on the edge of the screen then. Ah, oh, now he's gone. But anyway, you know, he's about to pass that trading post in my base and if I'd built it there I'd only just now be getting my XP. But because I built it in the middle, yes there was a slight chance, well there was a big chance actually that I wouldn't have got any XP because the Travois man would have walked past before the thing was constructed. But that risk paid off for me. Got the XP so much quicker. Now about to age up with the 400 wood politician going up of course uh, with the wood that's going to help me build my barracks as soon as I hits up going to be really really nice by the way I haven't built a house and I think this build order is only viable with uh, with 200 wood start because uh, you're going to be building a trading post and of course that is exactly how much a uh, trading post costs but yeah no house we only we only made three villages we don't want to be messing around with houses you know that's going to slow us down to the colonial age going to be going up you know super quickly just on the 10 pop idle in the town center uses the spyglass ability finds an 80 wood treasure what a pro and there's a scout treasure there. I am so lucky this game I'm just gonna bring that up again because you know Portuguese right you only get the one scout and uh, You've got no one to help you scout and if you're gonna build a trading post You know first of all you have to walk to that central one and then you have to build it That takes like a minute and then you have to go back to scout for your hunts and get those 30 40, 40 gold treasures And you know I found a scout that's gonna help me scout so much more. That's really really good and uh, And, and a, a spyglass the 80 wood treasure like such insane treasures not to mention I picked up a 140 food treasure before I aged to help me get up even quicker But anyway, yeah, that's the, like the whole point of the strategy like that 140 your food is going to help me so much more because you know what you're doing here is going up to the colonial age super quickly there is no messing around in the discovery age you're not collecting up unnecessary gold crates that aren't going to help you age up you're not collecting up unnecessary wood crates because you're not going to be building a house that's a waste of time you just want to make three settlers and just go up straight away that 140 food helps so much and then you just start spamming these colonial age shipments at them and you know that's the whole point we build a trading post by the way because you know uh, if you don't know what trading posts do obviously they generate xp if you don't know what xp does and you probably don't play the game or you're perhaps not not subscribe to me and um, all of that jazz but basically XP uh, affects the shipments the more XP you have the more shipments you have and, and and the whole point of this is just to rush as fast as possible in the colony spam these shipments 700 food gonna be using that to train it uh, all the military units that we need as you can see collecting a lot of coin for musketeers here don't really have the economy to su support like a full-on aggression well you know, a sustained aggression, I should say. This is a full-on aggression. Yeah, 700 food. Not a very efficient shipment, since food is the fastest gathering resource. But it is what musketeers cost. And that's, you know, exactly what we're going to be training. You're going to use that town centre. It's basically an outpost. An outpost. You put it as, as near your opponent as possible. Really take their map away. Try and place it near one of their hunts. And, you know, you deny them that hunt. And you can use it as, a, like, a, a forward spawn point for your military shipments. As soon as that town centre is up, I'm going to change the spawn point. Those eight crossbowmen, they're going to pop out right 
right next to my town center, and then I've got like a giant mass of units. I've got like five musketeers, eight crossbowmen before like four minutes, but like way before five minutes. It's, 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 it's insanely quick, and you can do a lot of damage. And if they're not expecting it, perhaps you can win the game this way. I don't think this is very good uh, strategy overall because you do sacrifice a lot of economy, but for the purpose of, of this, it's fast enough to really mess up the AI and kill their settlers and stuff like that. Now, normally you'd attack right now. Go right now. In fact, you've got all these units. Go, go, go. But did you notice that <laughs> he has a lot of units, as you can see there? He hit up to Colonial at like 1 minute 30. Like, go back. Go back in the video. Find it. He aged up. He was in Colonial at 1 minute 30. It was so quick. And he's like at Fortress in... You wait. He'll hit up to Fortress any second now. But basically, I'm waiting for those five musks from the barracks and the six musks uh, to arrive from the home city shipment. And then I'll sort of have my optimal amount of units for the earliest point in time possible, you know, that kind of critical mass, and then I can push in against the expert AI, because he already has a pretty decent amount of units. And uh, bear in mind, in a multiplayer game, and probably here as well, I could have used the Minutemen from that forward town center aggressively, and that, you know, definitely is something to consider here. Now, mu <laughs> he's training Aina, so uh, they're actually quite effective against my Musketeers, and I think that, obviously, h the Hussars, I could kind of engineer this build to, to instead of making Musketeers, make Hussars instead, and, uh, you know, that would be really strong, but actually it's not too too bad because he his a you know since he's an ai he doesn't kite he's not gonna shoot me and run away and shoot me and run away and kind of you know use his range advantage to stay out of range of my musketeers whilst still shooting them and uh, he's gonna stay completely in range of my musketeers and everything and just take the full damage and that's not good for him but yeah you know basically i've got all these units now i'm gonna march into his base and absolutely try and just annihilate all of the units that pop out of that barracks and of course at uh, that war hut i should say and of course since he's not a, a human he's not gonna try and keep those units alive and march them off somewhere and trying to mess up and uh, I'm just going to shoot them as they pop out and also trying to kill villagers you have to remember he's an expert AI the expert AI gets a 100% boost to the amount of resources that it can generate and and yeah basically the villagers collect 100% more resources than normal there's his Iroquois traveler shooting that to death nice killing that against a human player that would be absolutely insane and there's another one there as well going to go for it like, like two free buildings of course he got these these transform into buildings for free that's what they do and he got them for hitting up to the Fortress Age. By the way, he is in the Fortress Age. But yeah, uh, you know, he's an expert AI. 100% bonus to his gather rates. And then, since I gave him a 100% handicap, another 100% bonus on top of that. So if I don't kill these villagers, he's literally going to collect me to death. Because obviously he can transform those resources into units. So here I'm just going to shoot them to death. That is the priority here. But now, obviously, my unit shipments have ran out and my rush is going to slow down. So I'm going to have to ship 700 wood, which I have already done, and 600 wood as well, whilst all of my villagers collect nothing but food. And this is going to fund crossbow production from these two barracks here, which, of course, are, you know, pretty decent units. Really efficient resource to collect as food since it's the fastest gathering unit. And I think once these crossbowmen come out, I should be able to overpower him here just to defeat that shipment there. And then, you know, as units pop out of his town center from shipments and from his building, I can kill them before he can mass up enough for his economy to really mean anything. And uh, 700 gold on the way for musketeers. Then I notice this. What the hell? I'm just like, where the hell did he get those units from? Like, why aren't they in his base defending? I just don't understand. It's crazy. Like, oh my... <laughs> As you know, the expert bot with 100% handicap, I just... Yeah, it, 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 it's at that point I just think to myself, it's it's not possible. It's just not doable. Like, you can't win. So, um, yeah, I, I'm like, I thought I was winning. I thought I had the units. So once the crossbow come out, I thought I was in a position to go ahead and win it and, and, like, prove to this guy who was finding it difficult to rush with Portuguese that you can actually do it. But you, you just can't. Not against an AI with a 100% handicap. It, it's impossible. So I, I spawn this Tuck 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 monster truck. Let's take a look at what he's got. I'm kind of outraged. Let's kill all of his stuff. Yay. Uh, but yes, I'm now going to transition the video into another game where I do the exact same strategy against uh, against the Iroquois, but with no 100% handicap. Just a regular expert. So yes, you can see here that my eight crossbowman shipment is about to arrive. That is my first batch of military as well. You know, the five musketeers from the barracks. So we're at that point where, you know, I've done all of the stuff you saw last game, but the military is just now hitting the board. The first shipment has just arrived, and the first military is coming out of the barracks. Now going to walk in here, you know, see the settlers, and, and notice here how he's not actually in the colonial age yet. 
That is the power of the 100% handicap. With 100% handicap, he hits up at like 1 minute 30, but now you can see he's only just hit up. But yes, now, you know, gonna shoot these settlers dead, of course. Those are still generating him a lot of resources. He collects way faster than I do. They need to go down, and uh, I'm gonna try and kill the units as they pop out of, of course, the war hut there. So I'll station my units next to it, though these, you know, those 10 musketeers just finishing off uh, the unit, the villages, and the, some of the military units near that mill he was trying to construct uh, before they're gonna go in towards the blockhouse. But yeah, 700 wood now on the way, and of course 600 wood will follow that up as well. That's gonna be for the crossbowman production, as you saw last game. They're gonna fuel the military after this initial push. Of course, all of the villages on food. Food is the fastest gathering resource. You collect food faster than any other resource, therefore it is, you know, that is the most efficient resource to collect, so you, you collect nothing but food, send wood, transform those two wood shipments into military by training crossbow pike, which cost, of course, nothing but wood and food. Uh, very, very efficient. Just creates a lot of units very quickly. A lot of rush build orders are based off that very fact that food is a fast gathering resource and that you have two, you know, fairly decent wood shipments that you can use to train military units with. Anyway, the reason we're on times two speed is because honestly, you saw basically all of this last, you know, just, just a moment ago, and I really want to kind of push in now, but hopefully that does prove to the, uh, the guy who posted the comment that you can rush with Portuguese. He said he was able to rush with British and Ottoman. Ottoman, I can see. Yeah, that's a pretty good seal to rush with. Yes, I can see. I don't know what that accent was, but okay. And Ot uh, British, mm, yeah, not so much. If you can rush with British, you probably can with Portuguese. But I don't know. I don't know for sure. Basically, this is it here. I forced all of his villages off the resources. And yes, he, he can collect a lot faster than I can. But if he has, if I can kill his villages, the, just, if I don't let him collect resources, then that, that extra bonus means like genuinely nothing. So uh, that's what I was trying to achieve against the expert UI. Maybe I can beat the uh, the 100% expert bot. I think I'd have to rethink the build order and kind of uh, make hussars rather than uh, musketeers versus the Aina. Uh, we'll see. I'll see if I can do that. Or maybe someone wants to do that and send me a recorded game. I'd be happy to, to post that up. But uh, yes, uh, now just killing off the remainder of his buildings. And then, of course, he will ask me if he can resign as if I really give a... You know. Anyway, there it is. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, then do remember to press the like button. If you haven't done so already, do subscribe as well because I make regular content. Hopefully, I will make regular content now, guys. I do apologize for the lack of videos recently. But yes, uh, videos will go back to multiplayer commentary because that is what I do here on YouTube. So there is that. I will see you all next time.